Welcome to Close Up with Admire. Where we'll be unmasking issues closely to know more about God, knowing more about business, knowing more about talents. Knowing more about societies around and beyond. Asking uncommon questions. Sharing tips. Sharing joy. Sharing information. Admire Manyange, a public speaker, musician and entrepreneur. Subscribe to AD Media SA YouTube channel so that you don't miss an episode. Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to Close Up and today we are going to know more about the PKs. Yes, you heard me, PKs. Pastors kids. Today we have an opportunity to speak with one of them, Tariro or Faith Tatiwa. She is in China studying at Jing University. She's studying pharmacy. Tariro, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's my honor. Awesome. Great to have you. Um, tell me something, Tariro, being in the diaspora in China to start with, I think I think one of the first things I want to say is, are you safe? <laughs> yeah, of course, I'm safe. <laughs> of course, well, I'm China, safe. Well, in China, I had to ask that question first, you know, with the whole COVID and stuff, you know. Uh, but tell uh, me something. Let's get back to our topic. Um, mm. How does it feel for you to live far from home, you know, far from church, you know, and your dad and, you know, the whole PK environment. How does it feel to be away where people don't really know you're a PK? Well, what a question it is. Yeah, it's really funny and enjoyable. It's really funny and enjoyable, mm, you funny. know. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You seem to be having fun. You seem to be having fun. Um, tell yeah. me, uh, do you feel that maybe when you were back home with the parents or with the church being a PK where people know you that you're a pastor's kid, do you feel that some way, somehow you were deprived of your fun life? Okay, yeah, some is somehow, uh, yeah, it's not a lot, but yeah, some is somehow there are some few other things I can just mention that I felt deprived, not, not mm-hmm, from my, mm-hmm. not from my parents, but from the, you know, from the church members, especially because yeah, there are some of the other things they will be expecting you as a pastor's kid to be doing and not to be doing. Yeah, so I tell think... us, tell us what are those things? That's why you're here. This is close up. <laughs> tell us wh- what are those well, few things that you would expect it to do or that you felt you were uh, deprived of. Tell us what is that? Okay, wow. Okay, yeah, you know, there are some other things like, especially for the ladies, uh, the way I grew up, like, uh, I used not to wear pants or to wear trousers as a lady. And so this other time I wore my, tr- my trousers, my pants. Yeah. It was a fellowship thing, a youth fellowship thing. And maybe people that were expecting me also to be coming, uh, wearing a tray, a dress or a skirt, something like that. And yet it's a fellowship thing. People are supposed to be enjoying themselves. So I came, I was wearing my own trousers also. And I remember there was this other church member who was even asking me and she was surprised seeing me wearing a pen. I was, I was surprised also. I was like, ah, is it, is it something that, that a person should be surprised of seeing me also wearing a pen? So yeah, those are some of the things. And also they never expected me maybe hanging out with some other guys. Maybe you were just 
you're just mingling yeah having some fun you know it was something they could be questioning yeah they could put some questions about maybe they'll even start to to, to think that maybe there is a connection <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so. okay. Uh, tell me something. Maybe in, in less than a minute before you go on a break, uh, mm -hmm. do you feel that your privacy was invaded in some way? Like you could not really do some other stuff you needed to do as a PK? Yeah. My privacy was uh, invaded some somehow. Yeah, it was invaded some somehow. Some other stuff. Yeah. You know, especially maybe yeah as i said about hanging out with other guys you know it's something that they used to put some some questions so i come to see that maybe people they they, they are having some questions so as for me i was like a person who was shy i used to be so shy and mostly i used to like hiding myself even in our house i used to like hiding myself a lot so even when i would well, get along with, yeah <laughs> well, well, well today you are out here there's no hiding you're going to tell us everything <laughs> everything uh ladies and gentlemen don't go anyway uh, -oh. uh faith said she was shy but today she's out here she's not hiding she's gonna tell us <laughs> all about what she used to do and what she's doing right now in the diaspora stay in touch don't go anywhere sit back we'll be back shortly after this show break. Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Hey guys, hello, welcome back. We still have Faith Tariro Tetio right here in the studio. She's live from China, joining us from Zhejiang University. Well. <laughs> Faith, it's still good to have you on the show, eh? Thank you, thank you. It is my honor. Um, Faith, you were just telling us here shortly about um, how your privacy was invaded. You told us about how, um, you know, you, 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 you also wanted to hang out with guys and, you know, it was... It was always an issue with the people. I just want us to, I just want you to tell us one incident, maybe one, you know, not a lot. One where, you know, you, you know, your privacy was invaded in relation to your relationships. Tell us something about that. Well, yeah, I once dated uh, um, a guy who was at the same church, like the same fellowship where I was. So yeah, that guy wanted he he wasn't a person who wants privacy. Like he wanted like he's a person like he wants he wanted public things. Like yeah, he likes public things, you know, not to be hiding anything. So as for him, he was like, no, we don't have to hide anything. Yeah, we don't need to hide anything. So as for me, like I wanted it to be a privacy because yeah, I would. I would know that like a lot of people would know about it and you know you don't know how people would see it like PKs maybe they don't expect you to be doing things like getting in a relationship so I was like well I think we have to to make it something like a private so as for me like yeah do you think um your life being transparent and the privacy being uh you know always um uh, uh disturbed or disrupted in some way do you think it's 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 okay or it's healthy for 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 the pks i mean considering that well they they're generally known for being mischievous <laughs> so one would arguably say it i think it's fine for them to be you know for the eyeballs to be <laughs> looking at them all the time because well they're mischievous you know do, do you think it's okay no i don't think it's okay i don't think it's okay because it's not every pastor's kid was notorious as for me i'm not notorious that's all i can say i'm not notorious i'm not notorious at all I'm just a person who just grew up. I was just, 
I was just quiet. I was yeah, I don't see myself as being notorious even in my lifetime. I don't I don't see myself being notorious, but there are some other pastors kids who are totally notorious. They are so mischievous like While we're like, on that, just tell us T- tell us what what these others are doing. We just have like one minute, 40 seconds before we end this segment. But just tell us shortly that uh, how are the other PKs living their lives in China, for example? Uh, I mean, all the PKs in the diaspora, uh, your own observations, how are they living lives? Are they carrying on with the same humble, you know, good kid their way when they were home or they're becoming wild when they go out there. What is happening there? <laughs> About that question, um, yeah, there are some other people who are here. Um, yeah, I've come to know some other guys because some, they come to talk to me and they used to even testify themselves to me that I used to do this, I used to do this. And I came to see that, okay, even other PKs, they can even drink alcohol, they can even smoke, they can even go for parties out there, like doing those kind of things maybe they're not expected to be doing. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, Faith, stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. Faith is still with us. We're gonna come back on our third segment and she's gonna tell us more and in depth about how PKs are living their Christian life in the diaspora, how they're mixing it up, trying to fit it into the new communities and new environments that they're staying into shortly after this break. Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's still good to have Faith. Faith, it's still good to have you in the studio. Um, uh, Faith, before we went on a break, you were just telling us about how other PKs are living their lives. Some are repenting, some they still carry on doing some work, some are becoming worse. But I want you to shed more light about um, how you are fitting into that environment that you, you are in. Because I, I understand China is a different environment. It's totally different from Zimbabwe, from the dressing to the culture. It's sort of a Christian nation. How are you fitting in and maintaining your Christianity in diaspora? Well, yeah, looking into that question, uh, you know, it comes to a point of where I was uh, groomed, where I came from, you know, a lot of things that I used to do back home with my parents, how they grew me and how now I'm here in diaspora and yeah, how I'm doing things with my life. So yeah, some, some they're doing the other things, you know, those, yeah, some other people, they are groomed in a well, they are being groomed very well, but when they are released, now they are now doing other things that is totally different from how their parents groomed them. So, yes, for me, um, I'm still doing what my parents even, what I was taught when I was at home. And, uh, um, how is the transition for me? I'm more interested in your transition, your fitting in okay. into the environment because I understand you were telling me earlier on that wearing pants was actually a problem. Yeah. But now you have to juggle between not just wearing pants because mm-hmm. there there's more to that. There's more than just pants. Yeah. There's more. So how are you fitting into the environment mm-hmm. that has a lot of youngsters drinking and smoking wow. and all of that and still maintaining mm-hmm. your Christianity. How are you able to cope with wow. that change? Well, yeah, as for me, yeah, it's it's something that is normal for me here, wearing those pants. It's nothing that is normal. I've come to see that it's a normal thing. There is no so, so much about it. Like there is no anything wrong about it. So yeah, when it comes to the other guys who are doing the other stuffs, 
you know, yeah, they are doing other stuff. But as as for us, uh, you know, we are just there to guide each other. Yeah, to guide each other, even though maybe maybe they really know that maybe whatever they are doing is wrong yeah but now as i said it comes to a point of where you were groomed right some other people they came back like they came from their homes maybe drinking it's something that is normal for them smoking something that is normal for them so like as for them they'll be like oh no yeah so as for me like I I am a person where but I mingle with with everyone. I mingle with everyone. That's how that's how even Christ used to be like. So yeah, even you could even see him on uh text collectors and even the Pharisees will be like, "Hey, look at Jesus." <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Oh well, yeah, speaking of <laughs> speaking of text collectors and Pharisees, <laughs> I see you sound like you are you've got a lot of depth in scriptures and and stuff. You 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 I've been checking your your profile on your Facebook and stuff. You seem to be um having a post about gospel and scriptures and posting um have you guys created a fellowship there? Uh how are you guys conducting Christianity? Are you having a some sort of a fellowship or what's happening there in China? Oh wow. Well, yeah, like here we have some fellowships in the in different cities and like it's just an interdenominational yeah, it's interdenominational interdenominational fellowships. So like we just come together uh as Christians, we are just together, we just worship God like it doesn't matter you are coming from this part of church, yeah. We just come together as Christians. Yeah, and even we we do some So tell me something. Are you what how are you how are you inviting others, particularly those other PKs or other young people mm-hmm. who are not necessarily PKs? How are you also influencing them mm-hmm. to maybe leave bad habits? Mm-hmm. How are you doing that? Well, yeah, one thing that we we do here to 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 bring up like to bring up each and everyone together is uh mostly we do have some we do some picnics this side we do some picnics and we invite everyone okay. we invite everyone and like it's not just for the church people like those who are in the fellowships in the church 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 but even the other guys out there we invite them please come let's have fun together and i believe one way or the other we come to know each other and by that way we we will come to um introduce to them that we are a fellowship we are interdenominational fellowship and what what we tell them then we just tell them if they are interested to join us is the fellowship yeah they are so much welcome and some other people they do come and they register their names and that's how we come to okay that's make, beautiful that's yeah, beautiful so tell me them. um just in conclusion uh faith yes. tell me something in conclusion um what can you possibly say mm-hmm. uh to the young people that are PKs still living maybe with their parents at home who feel that they are deprived or anything because i heard you you mentioned a lot more throughout this uh interview about the way you were groomed the way you were groomed it seemed you appreciate the way you were groomed even though sometimes maybe back then you felt it was being deprived what can you say about how you grew up in relation to how it's helping you now that you are in the diaspora what is your last words in less than 1 minute just to advise those other pks out there wow thank you yeah what i can just say to the other pks out there even other people who are not pks yeah it's for them also is that um Yeah, how you were groomed, it may be a factor. It may be a factor, but I believe each and every one of us has been created for a purpose despite of uh being groomed well or not bring like being groomed well. I believe each and every one of us has been created for a purpose and what I can just encourage you is that um please live um do what god has called you for just yeah just 
do whatever that God wants you to do in your life and try to bring impact yeah, to the people surrounding you. You know, yeah, there's so much great things that God has installed for us. And please, to those who are out there doing those kind of stuff, I just encourage you, let's <laughs> come to a point whereby um, we do good yeah let's let's come to a point whereby we do good and just be good yeah just be good and yeah thank you so much thank yeah. you so much thank you thank you so much uh thank you so much pastor oh faith. my sorry, god TK. sorry <laughs> faith <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> That was intentional. Hey. You really sound like you're a pastor already. <laughs> so I, I don't know, maybe you do have um, a calling. It's been a pleasure having no. you here, Faith. <laughs> it's been a pleasure, Tarja. We do appreciate you coming here and speaking to us from China. There you have it, folks. Uh, Faith Tariro Tatiwa, live from China at Jane Jong University. She was with us and you heard all that she said. She's a PK. So PKs out there, do good. That's what you said. Stay blessed until we meet again. Cheers.